Hi everyone, it's Dr. Sonia. We're gonna do language in the barn today, barn stories a little bit. We're gonna talk about stories. So I know writing is a struggle for a whole lot of people and that's because it's so hard to get it from your brain onto the paper. There's a lot that has to go from your imagination to writing it down and giving it to someone else. Okay, so the easiest thing to do is record a story because if you can talk the story, then you can worry about getting it on paper first, but getting it from your brain to your mouth is the first part. Okay, but there are some tips that can help you. Okay, if you're going to write a story. This is a book that I like. It's called S's for Story. And today we're going to talk about characters, your characters. So some of you have book friends. Right? I have book friends, I have people that I love in books. I've never met them. They're not even real people, but they're kind of my heroes because they do some cool things in stories. And this says, C is for the character, every story star, the one for whom we cheer, we care, with whom we travel far. So books can take us on adventures, places we've never been, tell us about places in the world. I'm reading a book right now about Asia. Never been to Asia, but I'm learning a lot about their culture. Um, most stories, I'm gonna read you this, tell of a character, a particular someone, human or not, real or imagined, who claims the page like a movie star, claims the screen. It's the character who pulls us in and keeps us reading. So we wanna know what happens next. We travel along and we live in the story. So there are many elements that shape the story, like the setting. And we're gonna talk about the setting as well today. Okay, the characters who sets the story in motion. The setting is where the story happens and when it happens. The writer's job, so your job as a writer, is to create a round character, not, not just a plain character, okay? We wanna create somebody that we would like to meet or somebody that interests us or somebody we wanna follow or somebody who's super adventurous and does things we would never do because that gives us an outlet and gives us knowledge and it helps our imagination and, and it helps us plan and set goals and all of those fun things. So when you're writing a story and you need to have a story based on a character, then we want to know the character. We don't want you to just tell us, this boy has brown hair. That's very boring. Or this boy likes fish. This brown hair boy likes to go fishing. Not very interesting. But if we say, the 10 year old, pale complected, or he could be tanned from the sun, skipped through the field carrying his fishing pole with the lunch that his mother packed for him and stopped to dig worms along the way. Then we know a lot more about that boy other than he's just a little boy going fishing. We know he's happily going fishing. He's going fishing by himself because his mom packed him a lunch to go. We know that he's gonna stop and dig worms, so he's determined. He's not doing it because he has to, he's doing it because he wants to. So it tells us a lot about this boy. And it also tells us that he likes the outdoors, he likes to be out there, he wants to go do things. He doesn't wanna sit in his room and play video games. He wants to go fishing. So it tells us a lot about his character, okay? What he likes, and we haven't said, we haven't just told you a boring, detail we haven't just told you boring facts we've given you a picture so that's what we want to do we want to create a picture of our character in the story so when you're dreaming up a character for your story you need to do things like get to know your character interview your character so what does your character want for their birthday what do they need are they hungry do they need food do they have everything and need nothing, but all they do is want stuff, so they're kind of bratty? Or do they have a deep, dark secret that needs to be told or doesn't need to be told? Do they have a fear? What's their greatest fear? Because that'll come back. That's a good beginning. It tells us their fear. You know that's coming somewhere in the rest of the book. So it gives you some anticipation for people to want to read the rest of your book or your story, okay? Um, 
an obstacle. There's always a conflict in the story, something that we cheer for our character over. We want all this good thing to happen to our character, or we want them to stay out of trouble, or we want them to get out of trouble. Okay, so all of those things create a beautiful story for you. Now, there's a difference in children's, little children's books and chapter books, so older, so middle school and up kind of books. Okay? And it's not just the words. So we have to create that character. And this is one of my favorite books. Sandra Boynton is one of my favorite children's authors. And this is What's Wrong, Little Pookie? And the illustrator is super important in children's books because the pictures are going to tell us just as much as the words tell us. Okay? So Pookie's a little pig and he's sad. And we know that because of the picture, not because of the words. Oh, sweet little Pookie, your bright eyes are wet. Come over and tell me why you are upset. So we're feeling sad for Pookie. We know Pookie's sad because he has wet eyes. They didn't just say Pookie was sad. Pookie's a sad pig. That wouldn't be a very good story. My Pookie won't answer. Now Mama Pig is talking. I'll just have to guess. I'll ask you some questions. You say no or yes. Are you cold? No. Are you hungry? No. Did you fall and get hurt? No. Have you lost your old teddy? No. Did you tear your new shirt? No. So we're getting a picture of this character a little bit through the words and a lot through the pictures. So he's telling us about the little pig through the pictures. Okay. So that's a big difference between children, little children's, these are board books. So these are for children who can't read a lot of words or can't comprehend a lot of words. But look at this picture. This is a happy little mouse and he has an Easter basket. So this tells us a big part of the story. On Easter morning, Owen's basket was full. Look at that full basket. In it were jelly beans and gumdrops and buttercream eggs and a big chocolate bunny and a little marshmallow chick. And Owen has a yellow blanket. There's a whole story about Owen's blanket. Now he's happy and he's eating his candy. So we know about him, but not so much with the words, but with the pictures. So when you write a children's story for young children, you have to have a really cool illustrator. And so these books, I like these two. I like Kevin Hinks and Sandra Boynton because they illustrate their own books. So they give their characters they personify the story. They tell the story through their characters as much as their words. Now, when you get into bigger books, okay, we're going to have a setting and we're going to have a character. So we're going to introduce the character in the setting pretty quickly so that we want to be interested and invested in the life of this character. So this is the Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim, and this is a great book, and there's a whole series. If you haven't read it, do so. It is a Newbery Award winner. And this is a book I read as a small child and I love this book. Or as a little girl, I guess I wasn't too small of a child. Mrs. Frisbee, the head of a family of field mice. So we know she's the head of the family and she's in field mice. She lived underground in an underground house in the vegetable garden of a farmer named Mr. Fitzgibbon. It was a winter house such as some of field mice move on to when food becomes too scarce and the living too hard in the woods and pastures, in the soft earth of a bean, potato, black-eyed pea, and asparagus patch. There's plenty of food left over for mice after the human crop has been gathered. So that gives us the setting. It tells us where the story is taking place. This is a mama mouse and she has a family and she's living in the ground of a vegetable garden. Mrs. Frisbee and her family were especially lucky in the house itself. It was slightly damaged cinder block and the hollow kind with two oval holes through it. So they have a sturdy house for her family. So that's the setting, tells us when and where it's happening. And it, we have to read because there's no pictures. So they have to give us a big picture in our mind. We have to be able to see the character, okay? So I want you to show me your character, not just tell me about them, because that'll be very boring. 
This is another very good one, middle school level. The Witch of Blackbird Pond. It's not about a real witch. It's back in the days when they thought they were witches. So let's see when those days were. Those days were on a morning in mid-April, so it's the spring, 1687. Long time ago, before cars and planes and all those things. The brigantine dolphin left the open sea, sailed briskly across the sound to the wide mouth of the Connecticut River and into Saybrook Harbor. So we're starting out with a sailing boat. Kit Tyler had been on the forecastle deck since daybreak, standing close to the rail, staring hungrily at the first sight of land for five weeks. There's the Connecticut colony, a voice spoke in her ear. You've come a long way to see it. She looked up, surprised and flattered. So she's on a boat, sailing to America. She's sailing to Connecticut. So she's been on a five week journey. So she came from somewhere far away across the ocean. What ocean is that? That would have to be the Atlantic Ocean because she's sailing into the east coast of the US. So that gives us starts telling us about her character. Without telling us all those things, we can deduce them or see them from our character. Now, here's another one that's written very interesting and it's hard for some people to read things written like this. But the character is talking to you and the character has a certain personality that you'll pick up on very, very quickly. Okay? The meanest man in Maine. A little alliteration there. My name is Homer P. Fig and these are my true adventures. I mean to write them down every one including all the heroes and cowards and the saints and the scalawags and them stained with the blood of innocence and them touched by glory and them that was lifted into heaven and them that went on to the other place. He was on very proper English, does he? I say my true adventures because I told a fib to a writer once who went and put it in the newspapers about me and my brother Harold winning the battle at Gettysburg. They just gave us a time frame. And how we shot each other dead, but lived to tell the tale. That's partly true about winning the battle, but most ways it's a lot. So we know he's not super educated. He's living in the time of the, Gettys the Battle of Gettysburg, which was during the Civil War. Okay, telling the truth don't come easy to me. There's some incorrect English, but I will try. Even if old truth ain't nearly as useful as a fib sometimes. So we know he is not super educated. He's already been in a battle and he's not very old. Okay, so this, he came from the Civil War era. And so if that piques your interest about his adventures and what happened, you can keep reading. So that's the key. When you're writing, don't struggle to try to tell your story. Show your story. Okay, don't tell me that you're girl is shy, tell me that your girl is standing in the corner trying not to be noticed in a plain brown dress. Okay, versus the girl burst into the room in a bright pink floral gown, waving to everyone. She's not shy, right? She's bold. She's an extrovert. She loves people and attention. So we want to tell what our characters do. We want to show our characters to people instead of just being plain and boring and talking about them. Okay? Just like you would tell someone about your friend. Okay? You would retell stories about your friend if you're trying to explain your friend to someone instead of just saying, oh, it's a guy with brown hair. And... Okay? So do they floss their teeth all the time? That tells something about them, right? Do they live in a barn? That's my setting. So my setting is in a barn with a blue tractor and a tin roof and spider webs on the walls and a tool shed behind me. Okay, and horses over there and goats and chickens over there. So you wanna show people what you have, not tell them, okay? I hope y'all have a great writing 
All right, and we'll talk more about this later.